everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Evolving Through Experience, where we discuss and grow for every aspect, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and beyond. Today, guys, we got a special guest, a special guest that we've been requesting for a while now, but we finally made it happen. Yeah. Naomi, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Nah, for sure, for sure. So you know, obviously know what this platform is about. Um, I told you briefly, but today's episode, we're going to call it Evolving Through Power Talk. Um, oh. Obviously, you know why. I I'll definitely get into that because we want to talk about your story and how you've been able to evolve as a woman um, just through the different experiences that you have been able to overcome. Some obviously unfortunate, but at the same time fortunate because you've been able to prevail. Absolutely. So I just want you to go ahead. We're going to start from the top, but just, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Just let the people know what you do and who you are. Um, hello, everyone. I am Naomi Nastia Glay. So I am a realtor, um, former Miss Liberia USA, former Miss International Africa, uh, currently the uh, founder of Power Talk, which is a event panel where we talk about social and taboo topics. Facts. Um, obviously, you know, we met at a, at a networking event yeah. like minds always think uh, think alike. So um, speaking of that, before well, before we even get to that, obviously, shout out to EYL. We're going to start with, obviously, a childhood. I want to start there because, like anybody, that's where everything starts at, from how you was raised, going to your parents, all those different things. Um, so I want you to go ahead and just talk about your childhood a little bit, if that's cool. Yeah, so absolutely. So um, I was raised in Kansas City, Missouri, mm -hmm. but both of my parents are Liberian. So mm -hmm. I was raised in an African household um, in Kansas City mm -hmm. and so it's quite different because and I have six brothers three sisters mm -hmm. but it's quite different because you're this black child right mm -hmm. in Kansas City with predominantly white environment um, but then you go home and you're mm -hmm. African you know mm -hmm. what I mean so it was kind of like a little bit of a cultural shock yeah. kind of wherever I go like if mm -hmm. if I'm hanging out with my white friends obviously I'm going to be black if I'm mm -hmm. hanging around my black American friends you're African. Like, yeah. and they're going to do all the jokes or whatever. Yeah. And then if I'm hanging out with my cousins or whatever, then I am too okay. American. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about that, though, because obviously we know that's a um, that's a real, I would say, issue, the, the, the difference of how we approach our own and whatnot. So I know you said you was joked on. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I think some people may take it as a joke, but I think it's something more to it if you if you do agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, now as mm -hmm. um, an adult, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's cool to be affiliated yeah. with Africa in yeah. some sense. And so, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, no, growing up, yeah. that wasn't cool, especially being a child. You, Correct. Yeah. Kids are cruel. Yeah. Like they are so mean. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. kind of trying to navigate through all of that. So what what could you say to a, a young child woman that just came from, let's say, obviously, different countries in Africa, whatever country it may be, and they've new to this, obviously, Americanized system, and they, they meet in friends, and obviously we know there's a propaganda that's told about us before people even come over Absolutely. here. So let's talk about that. What could you give to that young black girl to let her know, like, all right, these are what the stereotypes, quote, unquote, but this is how you deal with it? Judge people based off of how they treat you. Mm -hmm. That's just it. You can't mm -hmm. group everyone as a whole, of course. Yeah. If you can have, um, if you've experienced so many mm -hmm. of a certain kind, then that's fine. That's your experience and that's fair. But judge people based off of how they treat mm -hmm. you. Facts. So, and, and with that being said, what when did that realization come for you to like, to obviously as a child, most children don't know that off rip. So when did that realization come to you to be like, all right, I'm going to start judging these quote unquote friends based on how they're treating me or even even obviously other white friends or whatever it may be just in general? I would say probably high school. Okay. It wasn't until high school where I started like realizing like, OK, mm -hmm. I have because I, I didn't really have like honestly a lot of like black friends mm -hmm. growing up and. High school is kind of when. I Why is that though? Why do you feel that that was the case? Kind of, I think more so. I lived in Kansas City, okay. and so Kansas City you don't have <laughs> well that the many, population. It's okay. not where I grew up at. I grew up okay. in like the north, so okay. yeah, more of the suburbs. Got you. Like okay. Yeah. So it wasn't okay. I got you. I did. I never been there, so I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Like I got. Yeah. You. Once I got like older and I was able to drive and I was mm -hmm. going in the city, I was like that suburban Explore. girl who wanted to hang out with like. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the hood news you. or whatever. Okay, so let's transition. So with that, so now your parents. So how was that? Like, how was your parents? Like, because obviously, you know, obviously it's not even a, it's a, it could be a stereotype. You could correct me, but obviously they say obviously African parents are harder on their children than anybody else. So how was that growing up with that process? Yeah, so I was like an abomination, right? Because mm-hmm. I didn't go to college. Like okay. I moved out here with like five hundred dollars. Like I'm out. Like Word. I'm leaving Take Kansas City. Um, mm-hmm. out. And so when my parents, they were like, I remember they were like telling people like, oh yeah, no, she's going to school out there. Like, no, I wasn't. Oh, like, that's I, what they just told people, but knowing you was doing something. And so else. yeah, they were like, mm. you know, come back home or you need to go to school, mm-hmm. whatever. And. I was like, nah, I'm out here doing my thing. I ended mm-hmm. up registering for school and mm-hmm. then just getting a check and yeah. not and doing left. nothing with it. Yeah. I got you. So you had a scholarship? <laughs> um, I had a scholarship mm-hmm. in Kansas City. I okay. had um, graduated high school early, mm-hmm. went to college because my mom was like, you have to go to college if you mm-hmm. live in my house. And so I went for a, um, I went for a year. Mm-hmm. And then that day of finals, mm-hmm. Peace out. I'm done. So you did the finals and just left. Done. Why did you make that decision? It just wasn't a place where I could Mm -hmm. grow. Like, you know, when you, you just know Mm -hmm. when you are in a space that you're not able to flourish. And I think, obviously, there was like some childhood things I was running away from, Mm -hmm. which. um, We'll talk about. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I got you. I got that coming up. I already know. um, But then also, I just wanted to pursue a dream. And at that Mm -hmm. time was modeling. So Mm -hmm. I had moved out here with $500 and Mm -hmm. was like, I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I'm leaving. Got you. Do you ever feel like as having African parents, obviously, and I don't even like to say African parents. I just feel like we putting a separation on us. Yeah. um, Even down to like African-American. But but just for the lack of a better term right now, having African parents, do you ever feel like they're, what do you, did they ever explain their reason now, I don't want to stereotype, but did they ever explain their reason on why they felt like you just had to go to college, why you couldn't be successful in any other aspect? Um, I mean, because that's all they know, mm-hmm. right? And, like, even now, a lot of, like, in Liberia, a lot of kids growing up, they want to be in politics because mm-hmm. those are the people who are educated, but those are the people who are making Quote, money. unquote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quote, unquote. And so um, I think that was it, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I didn't go to college. And did you Did thing. you ever later have a conversation with them to help them ex, ex, see a different side, or were they even willing to have a conversation to see another side and like support you, even if it didn't go align with their goals? Um, over time, they just mm-hmm. seemed like okay, it's, I can't. She's make, not listening. She's not listening. Like <laughs> gotcha. she's gonna do her thing, yeah. and then as I started getting more like recognition and mm-hmm. notoriety, it was more mm-hmm. so I'm proud of my daughter. She's yeah. This. She's that, but mm-hmm. at the beginning, it was like you're, you know, um, the disgrace, not a disgrace, but you're exposing yourself because you mm-hmm. know, I'm modeling at this oh, point yeah. in time, okay. you're exposing yourself and all that. They just didn't, they mm-hmm. didn't get it, yeah, got you. Yeah. And what about your, your siblings? How are they in this, in this support system, or what were their thoughts? So, you said you got six brothers, six brothers, three, okay. sisters. three sisters. So, okay. it's actually really weird. It's like, I think a part of me didn't even really take into account how they felt when I Mm. left, right? It's now when I go back home and they're like, oh, remember you used to do this? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, you used to do this? And I'm like, child, I don't even remember any of that. So, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they would support, call me, whatever, but I don't think they knew to what depth and what extent. Yeah. Yeah. But don't I, I think that's a good thing too. Would you agree? Like like you said, not caring about other people's opinions. Yes. At some point you did though, would you say? Yes, okay. exactly. So let's talk about that transition because I think everybody I think everybody may have gone through that or they should go through that because I think it's growth in there. So let's talk about that transition for you. Yeah, so I think um it just it just kinda comes with time, right? Mm-hmm. Like even still now till this day, I'm mm-hmm. like now more so than ever, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like I'm me. Yeah. I say what I say. Mm-hmm. I talk the way I talk, but it just comes with time. Yeah. Being able to teach yourself how to love yourself because mm-hmm. we don't get taught how to do that. That's, there's not a school for that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, I mean, I, I think it's definitely not a school for that, but I think we should be taught it. Uh, obviously, if we're not. And I think, like you said, our parents just know what they know. So they don't understand the importance of instilling these things. In, and maybe they're still figuring those parts out of their life. 
um, for whatever reason that may be, but everybody's on their own timeline. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to I want to go back now because obviously this is a very touchy so- topic. I want I didn't know when it happened. I know you spoke about it briefly. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. It was it was childhood. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, what he's referring to is um, kind of going yeah talking about my experience with child sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. So that was a thing from about eight years all the way to fifteen years old. Mm. Um, and so that was my main, I think that's kind of why there's some blurred lines mm-hmm. of what did happen in my childhood mm. with, you know, when my siblings are like, oh, remember you used to do this? And I'm yeah. like, child, yeah. I'm just blinked out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to move day to day. And so, yeah, that happened during mm-hmm. that time frame. Got you. So between that time frame, did you, did your parents ever know? Or like, did you, did they, like, when did you finally come out and tell them that? Well, yeah, it was about 15, 16. Mm-hmm. So it was. Uh, a situation where it's having Indian. African parents, mm-hmm. right? And um, my parents used, my mom at the time used to like send, because um, it was my brother. Okay. So mm. she used to like have him do things for me all the yeah. time, like take me to school, this mm. and that. And she wouldn't know what was going on. Mm. So I used to play basketball. I used to play basketball. I used to be in mm. French club. I used to be in all of the clubs mm. because I was trying to run away from yeah. home. And so one day I had basketball practice and she was like, um, and it was a parent teacher conference meeting and he came up there and I was like, what, yo, what mm-hmm. are you doing? Like, it's a parent teacher conference yeah. meeting. And my mom called me and was like, yo, like, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. Like, so she came up here. She was like, this is my first and my last time coming to this place. Like, mm-hmm. why do you hate your brother so much? And then mm-hmm. from there, that's kind of how it like unveiled. Okay. She's like, why do you hate your brother so much? Mm-hmm. And so, um, I ended up telling Uh, her, like, you know, well, this is what's been happening. mm -hmm. And then, you know. Since eight years old. Since, yeah, eight years old. Since the first grade all the way up Mm -hmm. until freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. So how how was, like, navigating this conversation? Because I I know it's no easy way to do that. So obviously you telling her from, at this point, it's ending because you're finally coming out and saying something. But how was that process of even navigating that conversation to tell her and your father? So we hit it from my dad, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm. So she was like, we're not telling your dad. Like, I'm taking this to the grave. Like, so when she, okay, so what happened was um, we had the conversation all mm-hmm. the way in the car, all the way up into the house. And I mm-hmm. remember this part, like. Vividly. Yes. Yeah. And um, he was in the shower at the time. So she just basically was like, you know, um, when you're done, come mm-hmm. in my room and talk to me. Mm-hmm. So we were all there. She addressed the issue. And, of course, See, in front of your brother, in front of him. And mm-hmm. he was like, nah, like, I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. And um, at that point in time, there was, like, truly a weight that was lifted off my shoulder. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you bought me all those things. Like, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't say nothing. Yeah. And um, then, you know, we went through that. And mm-hmm. then for, like, three days or so, we was walking around. It was Thanksgiving. So mm. we walking around the house like. Nothing happened. Nothing. Mm. And then uh, Black Friday came around, and all the kids, we would all go mm-hmm. out, and I didn't go that year. Yeah. I was like, I'm not yeah. feeling it. And my mom comes, and she um, touches me, and she's like, um, your dad wants to talk to you. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you told him. She said, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was about to ask you that. And like, how do you, like, do you feel like that was the right call to say she's going to take that to the grave? Like, Absolutely not. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely I'm like, that, not. That, 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 that's no, going to make it worse. No, but I know she was confused because yeah. she's in a rock and a hard spot. And yeah. I hate to, like, sometimes talk about it because mm-hmm. even though it's my truth, but to mm-hmm. put her in yeah. under the bus because yeah. I do understand that she was in a in a tight spot. In a tight yeah. spot with two children, yeah. you know. And I, and I think that's something we we could like obviously and I appreciate you even being transparent like and I could say that 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 I understand that perspective from your mom because I can only imagine these are both your children so it's like how can you throw one under the bus and then save the other one but it's Absolutely. like what even made him do that so it's like I could see understand that perspective. So what did your father say like how did he go about it? So there's only, and this probably, I don't get emotional when telling my story, Mm -hmm. but like, because I remember this part so vividly is he cried. And Mm -hmm. I, I have, it's very rare that I've seen my dad cry, Mm -hmm. you know, and recently I've seen him cry because I was sick real bad, Mm -hmm. but like what, three times Mm -hmm. my whole life. And that was like, dang, he was like, you stole your innocence from me. And I was I was broken mm. when he did that. And I was, what, 16 at the time? Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you was broken. At, well, at, if any, at what point was you able to finally 
like move like heal from it i don't want to say move on and get over because that's not something to s- simply do but at what point was that and then at what point did you if any was able to forgive your brother if so wow that's a loaded question mm-hmm. okay um so as far as healing i think it's an everyday journey like okay. mm-hmm. it's an everyday thing like i don't necessarily say i would heal i would mm-hmm. even say because it sometimes shows up in relationships that i my intimate relationships that i have mm-hmm. with men or even relationships that I have with certain family members. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily. I think it's a every healing every is an everyday yeah. process. Um, to, as far as forgiveness is concerned, mm-hmm. I have forgiven, but I have not forgot. forgot and it's mm-hmm. not a relationship that I care to mm-hmm. rekindle. Yeah, got you. Whatsoever. Mm-hmm. No, that, that, I, I appreciate the transparency. That, that, that is heavy. Um, just even like thinking about it, because I could only imagine having a sister. And I actually found out I had a sister probably like a few years ago. Oh wow! So all these years, I never knew I had a sister. But um, so I could only imagine like one of my brothers. Obviously, like that that just could be a lot. So to yes. hear you obviously are healing from it continuously. Like um, I, and I, I'll say this to be my last question before we move on. Um, so I know you said now that shows up. So what are some of the steps you're taking now? to pretty much continue that healing process even when you find yourself like where it's attacking you in some degree and it's like the most uh it's most clear like it's bothering you what are those steps you take now yeah so i do go to therapy so i've been going to therapy now for about three actually yeah three and a half four years almost okay and um so that's definitely a Mm -hmm. thing my support system like Mm -hmm. When people ask me questions like this, I think this is a form of healing, being able to talk about it um, without crying, without, you know, um, all of those other defense mechanisms Mm -hmm. that you'll do. And um, journaling Mm -hmm. and then a lot of self-care. Like, um, I think right now more than ever, especially with those, like, intimate relationships, is just Mm -hmm. really just taking a step back Mm -hmm. and reserving a lot of you because... Sometimes you'll give all of yourself to someone too Mm -hmm. quickly because Mm -hmm. that's what you're used to. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of learning, um, relearning a lot Mm -hmm. of traits that I had used for survival. Yeah. Keyword survival. So now it's survival mode. For sure. So what could you just say that you could give to a young girl that may have went through that? Um, what could you tell them? Like, obviously, that's what's working for you, and I don't think it's a right answer for everybody, but yeah. what do you feel like is a general that could help them start overcoming that that's 16 years old and just finally able to come out about it or yeah. looking to come out about it? Well, I would, obviously, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's, like, literally so many communities that mm-hmm. talk about sexual abuse and being abused, and um, you're not alone whatsoever. Yeah. And then also just having a great support system mm-hmm. is extremely important to be able to overcome because yeah. it's a mental battle yeah, more than yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just leaning into mm-hmm. God, leaning into your support system. Got you. And what, how do you feel like you could find that support system or how did you find your support system? Honestly, I think God just places certain mm-hmm. people in my life for mm-hmm. a reason. And so God mm-hmm. got yeah. you. So what inspires you to create power talk? So power talk. Mm-hmm. Um, what inspired power? Well, well, let explain. I, you correct me, but I want you to actually tell you what power talk is. I know I I seen it on your uh, your page and everything. Yeah. But you explain it what power talk is, and then you can go. Yeah. Through. So power talk is a um, panel discussion event mm-hmm. where we talk about social and taboo topics. So mm-hmm. the very first power talk. We spoke about um, being in the fashion industry and the mm-hmm. challenges that you may have and like having a nine to f- and, and it wasn't really even in the fashion industry. It was mm-hmm. in the creative space, being an mm-hmm. actor, being a all these different things, a mm-hmm. rapper, all these things in the creative space like you have challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had a panel that consisted of about four people four or five people and they just kind of spoke about their testimony Mm -hmm. um and then the second one we talked about the sexual abuse Mm -hmm. um within minority communities and we had dope panelists Mm -hmm. um chris stewart um kinsley brown all um sue solo Mm -hmm. they were all on the panel and they spoke about their um experience in that space mm-hmm. and then the third one was online because covid mm-hmm. okay 2020 yeah okay. it was also about sexual abuse as mm-hmm. well and then um the last one that we just had was 
about financial literacy within mm-hmm. minority communities. And uh, and then what, what year did that start then? Because that was the 2018. last one. 2018. 2018. Okay. Yes, so, so 2018, you just started to start it. Yes. Okay. And then from there, what what are your goals with that? Because I think that's really a dope thing to have. Like you said, it's, it's a panel, um, something that's consistent. So what are your goals to take? Where are your goals to take that? Yeah, so um, this year mm-hmm. we're gonna revamp. We're okay. doing our thing. I'm I'm nervous because I'm like putting it out there in nah, the nah, world. Nah, nah, you good? If you and don't I'm want like, to, ah. we, we we can wait. No, I have to because <laughs> this is like holding you accountable. Exactly. Got you. Say yeah, less. Yeah. So twenty twenty four mm-hmm. June twenty third from okay. six to nine p.m. Mm-hmm. The fifth power talk will take place, and it will be about. Um, basically physical limitations mm-hmm. and how it can impact your mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, and that recently came about because I just recently went through a health scare and mm-hmm. I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's extremely important for people to talk about um, how certain things, how certain traumas can impact your mental mm-hmm. health. Yeah. Okay. And, and with that, I want to, uh, there's two things I want to take out of that. Hopefully, we want to make sure ET get an invite to that. To the, oh, to that of panel. course, of uh, course. And the second thing is, if you are comfortable sharing, what was that? That I know you said health scare, and how has it been able to help you grow? So, what was that? If you don't mind sharing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was um, topical steroid withdrawal. Okay. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that mm-hmm. at all, but are you familiar with eczema? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I heard so it. So yeah, I have I eczema. Yeah. yeah. And um, went in 2018, 2019, 2019. Mm-hmm. I went to Liberia. I've gone to Liberia plenty of times, mm-hmm. and my face broke out real, real bad. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I was crying and because two weeks later I had to go to Japan. Mm-hmm. So called up my doctor. Literally, the day that I touched down in, in America, oh, okay. I went to the dermatologist and I mm-hmm. got prescribed trimacinolone, mm-hmm. which is a topical cream. It's a steroid. It's like mm-hmm. um, cortisone. Okay. So I've been on that for three years. Mm -hmm. Your skin will get addicted to these things. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was July of this last year, I Mm -hmm. went to Miami and I didn't, I stopped taking it. Mm -hmm. I started getting these black spots on my back. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, like from head to toe, Mm -hmm. I was covered in like dry flaky skin. And I'm Mm -hmm. talking about thick skin where it would like, there would be a pound of it falling Mm -hmm. on the ground where I couldn't walk. I lost like 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. I had to cut, shave all my hair off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like something I had never seen before. It's mm-hmm. like you literally wake up, you having a time of your life, yeah. drinking hookah, smoking, and yeah. doing all this. And then the next thing you know, it's like, and I'm someone who holds my personal, I mean, I'm sorry, my physical, um, I hold that to a standard, standard right? Yeah. And I'm always looking at myself like, oh, you're mm-hmm. beautiful, this mm-hmm. and that. And, you know, people, oh, you're pretty, this and that. But mm-hmm. then when all of that's taken away from you, yeah. when you... It's it's coming on your face yeah. and you're you have to shave off your head. Mm-hmm. Nah, it was it was like the worst, mm-hmm. the wor- literally the darkest time in my life. Your life, yeah, yeah. literally. And that's it's crazy you already say that because I was going to ask you about another experience. So from that, obviously uh, you're doing better now. Um, yeah. For sure. Okay. And it, I'm sure it's a healing everyday process. Yes. So with that, how has that like um like so? What's been like the 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 mechanism to help you? Just in case somebody else out there that may be dealing with that, what has been the mechanisms or things that has helped you to pretty much transition from that too? Okay. Yeah. So my faith was so strong during mm-hmm. that time, like because mm-hmm. I had nothing to rely on. Because at that point in time, mm-hmm. honestly, and this is me being completely transparent. I was like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm. I don't know how people kill themselves, but I'm. Mm-hmm. I need the script, like, yeah. cause I just could not do it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. So I think my faith was mm-hmm. really important. My support system, mm-hmm. finding a good support system. I had my friends come and mm-hmm. cook for me. Yeah. My mom had to fly out and bathe me, cause I couldn't mm-hmm. walk. I yeah. couldn't do nothing for myself. Um. And then I would also say just, like, know what fits your, like, listen Mm -hmm. to your body. I Mm -hmm. don't believe in medicine whatsoever. That's a fact. Don't ever think that I'm about to take any sort of medicine Mm -hmm. right now because medicine is what ended me Mm -hmm. there where to where I was that negative and Mm -hmm. I'm like, my life is not even worth living anymore. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm glad to even have you here and to even know that. I think um, it's it's, no, it's a it's a uh, (laughs) it's a very serious topic. Uh, We can get some tissues. You got some tissues. You need some tissues. Yeah, get get some (laughs) tissues. Sorry, no, it's good because that's real. It's right outside the door. 
This therapy, this is a therapy session. So no, uh, yeah. I think because it's so mm-hmm. recent compared mm-hmm. to, you know, the child abuse. This is, yeah. I mean, I'm still kind of having, like, certain impacts and effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, no. It's all good. Okay, it's okay. Because it's going to come down. <laughs> and I don't want my makeup being messed up. So. You're good. You're good. It's all good. It's healthy. It's healthy. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's honestly, healthy. speaking. Because, yeah, that was, like I said, a dark. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably just want to make sure I'm good before I begin again. Yeah, you're good. Just get under your nose. Just okay, yeah, thank yeah, you. You're straight. You're straight. I think it's vital. Um, I appreciate you sharing it because, like you said, you never know who's going through things and you never know where people been at in life and what instances or experiences could push them to that point. And I think Absolutely. it's something that we could talk about more because it's a reality. It's a reality that we need to address so we can avoid it. So Absolutely. just like, for example, even people that have done molested people or whatever that's something that we should study not obviously giving them a pass by any means but let's study it so that way we can avoid these type of things in the future so you hearing you say that i'm just glad that you're here honestly because you you never know what people going through even one thing i do like and i need to get back to like when i'm meditating and, and putting out energy to the universe or whatever i'll pray for people that i may not even know like just because you never know what different people are going exactly. through, and without you don't have to know somebody to care for them. I don't. I don't believe that you got to know somebody exactly to care for them. So just hearing that and how seeing how much you have grown and will, you willing to share that, I just want to commend you and say thank I appreciate you because it's definitely gonna help another woman out there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for sure. nah, for sure. Um, so even with that, I want to talk about obviously being going back to Liberia. So let's talk about that because one thing I want to do this year, I'm planning. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me the word. I'm just going to do a spontaneous trip to Africa. I don't, it's probably going to be Ghana, but I want to ask you, like, what are your experiences, obviously, from being, even though that's your home and going back and forth, like, what is your experiences from that? Yeah. Like, grateful, good experiences, obviously. Yeah. I love Africa. Mm -hmm. I love everything about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because it's truly my mother's land Mm -hmm. or what, but. Mm -hmm. It's there's no better feeling than mm-hmm. going there. Like the mm-hmm. air is different, the food, the mm-hmm. culture. Um, I'll even say I had a time in Ghana. Mm-hmm. I've had a time. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> I've had a time yeah. in Ghana. Um, but Liberia, that's of mm-hmm. course home. Oh. Um, I mean, I actually have two businesses going mm-hmm. there, joint business yeah. ventures um, in Liberia. So obviously, I love. Liberia and everything it stands for, not just because I'm there, um, mm-hmm. you know, from there, mm-hmm. but our food, yeah, top tier, best jollof rice. Just so say you that, know. say that. Yeah, Liberia has the best jollof. So, rice. so how far is Liberia from Ghana? It's a like a two hour flight, three hour flight, three hour flight. Yeah, okay, not so, far at all. Not far. Okay, see, these things I need to know because yes. I, I, I I truly want to move out there. I, that's not I can't do that immediately, no yeah. time soon. But that is one of my goals to move. To some country in Africa, I'm not sure which one, well, but I definitely need to get tapping each one just so I can see the vibes. I would say the West Side is the best side. The West Side, okay, bet. So, say less. Yeah, that's bet. Ghana, Nigeria, mm-hmm. Guinea, Togo, yeah, yeah Liberia, okay. Ivory Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, when do you, when do you, how often do you go? I go once a, once or twice a year. Once twice a year. Yeah. So is your 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 fi- your mom and everybody still there, or did they move back? I know you say you was a yeah, kid. Yeah. So they're um in mm-hmm. Kansas City, and okay. then uh, my dad lives in Liberia. Okay. So how is that like for him living in Liberia and then your mom living in Kansas? God, it's complicated. Okay. I have <laughs> two dads. Okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got yeah. you. No, nah, I feel you. That that that's a reality though. That's a reality yes. for a lot of people, whether that's two moms or whatever. So Yeah. So okay. my dad that um raised me mm-hmm. and yeah, he so he lives in Kansas City as well. Mm-hmm. So how was that relationship, if you don't mind even us talking about it, because I think um having multiple parents or whatever can be like mm, not weird relationship but it can have its challenges so what has been some of those challenges that you've been able to look back now and say all right these has helped me grow or even helped your parents grow because it's a it's a it's an all-around thing it's too complicated too complicated all right so we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll pass on that one then we'll yeah. pass on that one if anything what's one thing you could give to somebody just one simple thing that you could say um, in Without regard- going into your details or for your 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 okay, as far as that, yeah. um, I would say, you know, because I'm still kind of navigating mm-hmm. that 
Mm -hmm. whole situation. So I would really just say to find peace in whatever Mm -hmm. decision you decide to make um, with certain relationships. Mm -hmm. Got you. Hey, I I think uh, with your situation, obviously, I think uh, it still could be a beautiful thing. I think this depends on how people look at it. Yeah, for sure. For for me and uh, having, uh, obviously, my, my brothers and siblings having, obviously, different mothers. I think like it could go hand in hand, mm-hmm. and like I said, I don't I don't regret none of it because without them I wouldn't have my dope siblings or whatever things right. of that nature. So I think like you said, making peace with whatever relationship is is going to be the biggest most vital thing. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you what what some books or even people that has truly helped you overcome and is or inspired you and help you prevail. Oh wow! So I need to start reading books. Okay, I'm currently reading one. It's called um, "Set Up Your Boundaries." Mm-hmm. Um, my friend recently just got that for me, okay. and I think it's been helpful because mm-hmm. I've been able to navigate um, not having boundaries. Yeah. Okay. Like being such like a people pleaser, mm-hmm. like a yes person. Like I've realized that my love language is um, acts of service. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to show up for people mm-hmm. by doing acts of service. Mm-hmm. You need me to help you move. I'm there. You need mm-hmm. me to do this. I'm there. Even if it stretches myself and mm-hmm. I'll do that. And so um, what do they do for you? I expect mm-hmm. them to love Return. me like that. But their love language could be something else. And they love me in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So um, that book is kind of helping me mm-hmm. kind of understand those type of things. Okay, and one one I will recommend for you to probably check out is uh, it's called What Happened to You, mm. um, versus uh, What's Wrong with You. So it's by Oprah and a doctor. I can't remember the other person okay. name, but it just pretty much goes into pretty much everything we just talked about. So you know how somebody you may be getting an argument and they be like, "What's wrong with you?" Mm-hmm. and that may be triggering, but it's more of like what happened to you because now we can sit back and have a peaceful conversation mm-hmm. and dialogue to say, "Okay, these are the circumstances, experiences that you've been through, and these are having a effect on today's." Uh, relationships today's interactions with yeah. different people so I definitely think you would enjoy that as well oh yeah thank yeah. you no nah, yeah. for sure and I'll send it to you what about um a person though a person mm-hmm. um I would say my friends my mm-hmm. support system right mm-hmm. now they have been able to help me go through as far as like a famous person you mm-hmm. referenced Oprah like mm-hmm. I've loved her from like the end of time and mm-hmm. I may I know people cancel her every day or whatever the case may be, but we have similar stories and I can relate to her. And so um, the idea behind Power Talk originally was I want to be the next Oprah. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have conversations with all kinds of people and Mm -hmm. help their testimonies um, inspire those um who hear them so so hey so we're gonna do it we're gonna put that out there so you're gonna be the next oprah if not bigger 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 i like that (laughs) let's go bigger go bigger go bigger (laughs) so yeah so all right so we're gonna have that so um these are one question i ask to all my guests um in your own words what does evolving through experience mean to you i think evolving through experience means a number of things right i don't think it necessarily means evolving through your own experiences right Mm -hmm. i think that you're able to learn from other people's experiences Mm -hmm. where when you know when people say oh uh, what is it experience is the best teacher yeah. not necessarily your own experiences mm-hmm. right like i can if you bumped your head going through this way and mm-hmm. you tell me hey don't go through this way i just bumped my head mm-hmm. i'm also going to learn so i think it's also right. being able to take what you've learned from other people take what mm-hmm. you've learned from your experiences to um understand that to understand that you're gonna keep going through life yeah. every single day mm-hmm. until you die you're gonna yeah. evolve you're gonna have different phases of yourself mm-hmm. that's honestly the, the the correct answer i tell every guest there's no wrong answer to it because like you said evolving through experience can mean so many different things and it doesn't have to just be your experiences and that's why we sit here today and i have these therapeutic conversations because it may be something that you said that somebody can't relate to and also they can't relate to but it could still help them evolve in whatever their situation oh, cool. is um, whether that's big or small, however anybody want to scale it, but they're all vital. Um, and one other thing I do want to ask you as far as like your mindset, um, I, I think that's that's super important uh, for anybody, women, men, no matter who they are. Um, at what point will you say, or before I even get to that, where do you want to see yourself like in the next five years? Because we're going we gonna to put it out there and it's going to happen. So where's that going to be? I need a man. Okay. All right, ET, we gonna uh, they they gonna find we gonna find you one. 
We're gonna find you one. Yeah. That's that's the goal. Like well, what what else? I don't want to say that's just the goal <laughs> that's because not that just sounds the crazy. Goal, but yeah, yeah, that sounds crazy. Oh uh, 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 no. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I definitely want to instead of being a real estate agent, mm-hmm. I would prefer to be either on the development side mm-hmm. or invest okay. investment side. Um, as far as career is concerned, mm-hmm. power talk. Mm-hmm. At that point in time, we need to be either on the road mm-hmm. or we need to have like a set studio mm-hmm. that we're doing these things at. Um, yeah, at that, I mean, at that point in time, I'm definitely gonna be a multimillionaire. Facts. Like, I just do too many things. My mm-hmm. hands are in too many things right now mm-hmm. for me not to yeah, be, be that. Yeah. yeah, honestly speaking. Okay. Yeah, I should be traveling the world mm-hmm. like always. Yeah, that's no facts. Too. All right, yeah. no, I like to hear that. I got I got some ideas for that power talk too that I, I love to discuss. Yes, I would yeah, love to I, discuss. I, I think it aligns with the brand, truth be told. So, oh, well, yeah, we could definitely um, connect. On yeah, that we, we partner, will for sure. For sure. I, I, I love that idea. Um, so now I, I just want to thank you again. Um, it, well, first before I even do that, uh, what any last words you want to just leave the people? And we're gonna definitely help you find a man through ETE. So. Ah! <laughs> they got to be evolving too, though. So I got you. Oh, I have. I can give you the qualifications mm-hmm. for that. Later. All right, go ahead. Put them out there. They're oh. on the camera. <laughs> put them out there. We got you. I'm going to chop it up. Make sure they know. They got to know the qualifications. Okay. So they have to be cultured. Like, you mm-hmm. can't say that you've never been out the country. Okay. That's like just my thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. They have to have been to Africa uh, or no, a country in Africa? No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. Yes. Okay. They need to know how to spell. Mm hmm. They can't say they, they're the, like they, no. <laughs> no, that's a vital. That's waste vital. and waste. Yeah. Like, weather and weather. Weather and weather. No. Yeah, I got you. No, that's like not a thing. Like mm-hmm. for me at all. You have, they have no money. Mm-hmm. I No, I need security. In yeah. Me, like for real. Got you. That's a fact. And, um, oh, they have to be taller than me. Okay. And what else? Oh, they have their soul got to be right. Mm-hmm. They just have their to be spirit, yeah. their spirit. Yeah. Like they have to be good mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. genuine. Like that's important to me. Mm-hmm. They need to know how to communicate. Mm-hmm. They need to be open minded. Emotional intelligence. Oh, yes. I got you. Got you. And what else? I don't really care for the multiple baby mama situation. Mm-hmm. I don't have no kids. So you're not judgmental. I'm not. Okay. No, I <laughs> like, think that's good. That's good. That's oh, good. Yeah. No, but I don't want nobody has multiple kids. Oh, multiple. Okay, okay. Multiple baby moms. Okay, okay. I got you. No. What's multiple, though? Just hypothetically speaking. I mean, what's one, multiple? two. That's all. <laughs> oh, so two is the max? I mean. Or they can't go over one? Yeah, I'm okay. saying, I'll say two. Like, okay, two. I get it. Because the majority of the time, mm-hmm. I do date older men. So mm-hmm. I understand that you've probably lived your multiple yeah. lives, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But yeah. And they need to be wanting to have kids because I don't have any kids. I just wanted to understand so they can know so we because we're oh, gonna yeah. chop this up and put it out there. So I got you. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. So now, other than that, um, any any last words you did want to say <laughs> outside of that? Um, for the man? Yeah. I mean, just well, well, for one, thank you for having me. Nah, I really pleasure. appreciate it. Um, nah, this thank was you. actually really nice, and I needed this. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to be, I mean, for anyone who's listening, just to be themselves mm-hmm. and under and don't beat yourself up if you're not who you are or, or where you want to be right now Mm because i think we get in the habit of oh i'm supposed to be here and looking Mm -hmm. at social media looking at other people and it's just like stay in your own lane keep your eyes on your own paper and understand that you will be where you're supposed to be Mm -hmm. when you're supposed to be there that's a fact well i appreciate you coming on again like i said this was therapeutic for me i'm sure it's gonna be therapeutic for for every anybody that does watch it so if y'all enjoyed another episode of evolving through experience make sure y'all follow us make sure you shop the brand make sure you support it share it with a friend and if you're not evolving today start because if you're not evolving you're dissolving so make sure y'all catch us on the next episode peace I'm a bad friend.